What a fantastic way to end an arc, especially one that had nothing to do with like anything that could be worked into a Halloween story and that yet ending on a bit of a spooky theme. Well, that was all around something that uh, I was looking forward to in this chapter, and I got just that. So, as we left off, Amora was now in front of her mother, and she was being faced with the decision of what to do with her. Because she, you know, after feeding Kura and I's mech and bringing her out, she was now at his mercy, but his mercy was not what was going to decide her. It was whatever Hamora wanted, because Shiki wanted it to be closure for Hamora and for her to be able to decide what happens to her. It was it was not for him to really do anything other than fulfill her and I's wish after death and bring in that last bit of effort and let her decide her own path. And after that, when all these people are like talking about, you know, it's it's time to get revenge on Kerr and I, time to show her up for what, uh, you know, what, like, just give her a little payback after what uh, she's done to them. And Shiki was just like, no, guys, guys, come on, let's, uh, let's let Amor decide what to do. And you have Paul and, uh, he's just, you know, and, uh, oh my God, I forgot the old dude's name, the old, big older dude. They're, they're just discussing, oh no, we, we, we want Amor to do it. She's, she's the one and in a way most affected by it because she was Valkyrie's number one pupil as well as Kuranai's daughter so she has the highest level of like relations into all this and honestly she's got she's got the most writing on this so who else would be the better deciding person over all this than you know the 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 disciple of the hero of these guys but also the daughter of the person that they despise so much now with Kur and I, she has she's kind of started this whole situation where the the question is is Hamora going to to really do anything for her mother? Is she going to care that her mother, who you know abandoned her and has become this big issue on this other planet, is she going to do the more logical thing and kill her, or is she going to you know oh? This is my mom, I can't, you know, I can't hate her, you know, whatever, whatever. I know a lot of people took into the poor situation something like Urza and Irene, the obvious mother-daughter kind of like faux ship that was in fairy tale, whereas Urza was like, you are not in any way someone that I am going to uh, to yield to. Even if you are my mother, I don't care. You're not me the guild. I don't see you as my mom. I see you as... You know, as a threat to the guild, um, the only person I ever really saw as a parent was Master Macrop. Now, again, that, you know, just kind of, like, laid out something for her character, but what is Homura's character going to do in all this? Homura, I think she, like, the, the resolution made a lot more sense to her character than uh, what a lot of people are expecting. I thought maybe we were going to get, like, some twist and she was going to kill her, or, you know, she was going to be some really kind merciful person we got kind of both in, in a way because she's talking to her and she's like discussing how you know uh when when Kerr and I's trying to like win her over trying to sweet talk her and you know the fact she's her mom but Amora breaks out the uh the little stuffed animal that her mom gave her that she carried around with her saying how it was the only thing left that connected the two of them together and Kerr and I didn't even recognize it so Here's Hamora, like, there, then there's nothing really left between us. That was the last tie, and clearly that tie does not exist. So for me, this is over. And you know, she's got her sword out, and she's talking about how, um, you know, she, she cuts the ropes that's bound, uh, binding Kurnai, and she says essentially that she didn't really need a mother. Uh, you know, even that Valkyrie said all these things. Like, she had no interest in, uh, in Kurnai. She did not need her in her life. What she needed was someone to kind of, like, care and love for her. And regardless of Kerr and I being, you know, a machine not related by blood, she was that person. And even though all those times where she said that she was her mentor, not her mother, she fully accepted that this was pretty much like, this is pretty much the closest that she ever got to actually having a mother. And when she's discussing all this and she's just like, all right, you can go, get out. It's, it's, you know, she spared Kerr and I out of respect for Valkyrie. She did that out of respect for uh, her mentor, whereas the whole part when she's pissed off and saying, you know, it never, you know, cross paths with her again, 
you can tell that that is her side. She's pissed, and she's she doesn't want to ever deal with Kerr and I at any point in the future. And that is the side that she was holding back in order to uh, in order to really get this across from her. And you know, you can see that look in Kerr and I's face that she thinks she's won, and she's like, "Ha ha, tricked him." This is all on me now. I'm I'm gonna get away and I'm gonna start up a new whatever whatever my plan is. Didn't go well for her because right then here we come with Centric with a bat, you know, pretty much like pretty much the manga now version of Negan. He's he's got this really cool mask and shades to cover up all his burns. He's gonna become a bit of a vicious dude. I like his cool like big skull like mouth. I'm wondering if now if that's even a mask or just like what like a messed up version of his face and then he's got the metal plating. I would like to believe it's a mask and he's got like a really cool mask now. And I'm also really hoping the bat is going to stay his signature weapon through and through. So now he just like bashes her right up in the mouth and she's like trying to like talk at him like do you know who I am? He's like yeah you're a crazy old bitch now. Now you're a crazy old bitch who belongs to us. And it's back to the sex worker slave life for her. Maybe when she got to power, she should have you know, been a better person. And these kind of things wouldn't have happened to her. But she was a scumbag. And, you know, was getting on mass genocide and was definitely into slavery and torture. So, you know, things are turning around in her. Sucks to be you. <laughs> now you are not, you're not going to be missed. I liked the... Hiromashima, you know, is one of his uh, rare dives into being a bit of a darker person. He doesn't do it very often. You know, every once in a while we get, uh, we, you know, we see some of the more darker side to him. But when he does, it's always enjoyable and it's always surprising. It just, what was funny to me is I saw I saw some people being like, haha, this is fairy tale. It's, you know, it's getting dark scenes. I remember Jalal splattering slave drivers against a wall like gushers. It was not... It's not an everyday thing for Hiromashima to get dark, but he need, he need to calm down. It's not like he's never done any any dark stuff in either very tall or Rave Master. He's he's all up for it. It just depends on uh, at what point you're uh, what point in the story he's feeling. Is it a character that he's like, man, I want this character to possibly get a redemption arc, or maybe you know, it, at some points used for uh, growth for any of my protagonists or. It's not gonna go anywhere for Kerr and I. She's she's just one of those characters that doesn't seem redeemable. She's just one of those characters that all around is like, yeah, we don't need her anymore. Let's get rid of her. And that's exactly where she is now. She is back to the bottom where she started. Not deserve anything but that. And then we got a nice closing out of the chapter from Homura, who's having a nice uh, little one-on-one -on -one heart to heart with the, you know still robotic corpse of valkyrie and saying how you know she she leaves that little toy to her and it wasn't like oh yeah my mom left me this it was a, to her more of the connection point between her and her mother and if now it is for valkyrie it is now going to be for her she, he's, she's leaving it at her grave and saying how it is now going to be left as a uh you know this symbol between them and it's just really nice I like the closing out of the arc. You had the you had the bit of a dark, spookier moment, but you got to you got to really pull it towards some nice, better feels in those last moments because that was that was really needed for Amora's character. Um, uh, legitimately, at the moment, I think the the current spots are most interesting characters. I think the best characters in Eden's right now. Chigi is definitely up there. Um, I have a high level of uh, interest and potential for Jin and Drak and Joe. But as of current, just straight out without including, like, my belief in the future for them. Right now, it's definitely Shiki and Homura. Homura has been developed in one arc as a really good character. And she all around is enjoyable to see and interact with the other characters. But as well as just, like, so far, her backstory that's been given to us has really said a lot about her character. Just the restraint that she was able to hold in. Uh, and and put up against not cutting uh, Kerr and I down when you can tell that look in her eye when she's pretty much just like go away and never let me see you like never cross paths with me again never at any point in the future like walk anywhere near me our lives will never intersect again and that was just that sign of you know that she wanted to cut her down she really wanted to end her but she was holding it back because she knows that that's not what. Uh, well, her master wanted at this point, but that warning is is 
probably the best that she's gonna get and then if it happens again it's gonna be like well nope i'm done with you let's do i'm gonna just cut you down and you are now done we don't need you in this uh in this galaxy anymore so i'm wondering what else is gonna come of this arc because we're still we still have drac and joe you know he went after the eden zero ship we don't know who out of the uh, the characters, if any of them from this arc, are going to carry over. Like, I, I have suspicions that Nino is going to join the Eden Zero crew. I know that their crew is still growing, and there's still, you know, hope that some of the characters can join in. I'm still hoping Jin, I'm still hoping Jin ends up becoming a member of Eden Zero, but that is yet to be known as he is right now. He is some form of face ninja who just does not want to cooperate with anybody, so... That alone just makes me worried for his future, but hoping he gets converted at some point. Come on, we can't count. We can't count Nino as the converted over to the good side character when he he seemed to be good all along. He was just going with what he thought was best. But anyway, comment below. Tell me to think about the chapter. What you thought of this whole situation, and how you think about more after the end of this. Like again, I I think she's. She's best girl out of the series for sure. I know a lot of people like Rebecca, but Re Rebecca has nice nice growth, but I don't think she's gotten her own like character arc like Kimura has so far. We'll see after that, but as of right now, like Kimura's got a lot going on for her, and this is just the beginning for her. So, I really appreciate you comment below. Thumbs up to you for the like button and subscribe button, and check out my other videos. But other than that, I appreciate everyone who's already subscribed, and I thank you all for listening. Bye.